Welcome to Paleo News, stories from the past for the world today. In this bulletin, trends in evolution, a wrap from the museums, dinosaur news and fossil arthropods. We start this bulletin with several stories about trends in evolution. First up, two stories about convergence, where a body plan has been independently evolved several times. It may look like a fossil of a living fossil, but it isn't, or wasn't. A new study took a closer look at the 300 million year old fish species Tanrinichthys macalisteri, and it found that, although they look very similar to modern sturgeons, they evolved from a distinctly different evolutionary path. Tanrinichthys had a distinctive suite of characters that have arisen several times throughout fish evolution, including among the sturgeons. The first fossil of Tanrinichthys was found in 1984 near Albuquerque, New Mexico. And a new study of the marsupial saber-toothed predator, Thylacosmilus, reveals that it was not a saber-toothed predator. Saber-toothed mammals with enlarged blade-like upper canines have evolved at least five times across the mammals and are proposed to have been specialists in taking large prey. But a recent study of Thylacosmilus atrox, the so-called marsupial saber-tooth, showed that it lacks many of the critical anatomical features related to this inferred predatory behaviour. Bird skulls are distinctive in the way they're put together and how they work. A new study takes a closer look at bird skulls and provides an account of the evolutionary transformation from early dinosaur skulls to skulls of modern birds. They note that a shortening of the face, an enlargement of the brain case around a larger brain, a general thinning and looser joints are trends in this evolutionary journey. They also point out that these trends can be thought of as a juvenilization or pedamorphosis of the early dinosaur condition. And a recent study questions just how diverse a pterosaur fauna from South America really was. The Lower Cretaceous Romaldo Formation of northeastern Brazil is renowned for the abundance and diversity of flying reptiles that it has produced. There are at least eight named species, six of them belonging to the genus Anhangura, but this new study suggests that such diversity is overestimated, with many species based on subtle differences of the shape and position of a crest on the skull. This new study suggests that differences between juveniles and adults and males and females may account for the diversity of crest shapes and that these differences do not represent different species. Now a quick review of fossil stories from major museums. The Carnegie Museum of Natural History in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania opened its new exhibition, Dinosaur Armour, on June 29th. The American Museum of Natural History in New York published a full account of the historic excavations at Howe Quarry in Wyoming. This was a mother load of Jurassic dinosaur bones first excavated in 1934. And an ancient wombat has been found in the American Museum of Natural History 50 years after it was first discovered. The new species, dubbed Makapuna, lived about 25 million years ago in northern South Australia. The specimen was collected by US paleontologists mid last century and taken back to New York where it lay unidentified until rediscovered 10 years ago by a visiting Australian paleontologist. Makapina was four to five times bigger than a modern wombat, weighing in at between 143 and 171 kilograms. Recent dinosaur news. An exceptional fossil egg site first discovered in 2015 in Hogo Prefecture, southwestern Japan, has produced over 1,300 eggs of six different species of theropod dinosaur including eggs of the smallest known non-avian theropod. Hymalithus murakami is a new genus and species of dinosaur egg 
with an estimated mass of less than 10 grams, about the same size as a modern quail egg. The eggs were laid in a river floodplain about 110 million years ago in the early Cretaceous period. And the bones of Rohanavis ostromi from the late Cretaceous of Madagascar help us to understand the evolutionary link between theropod dinosaurs and birds. The beautifully preserved fossils of Rohanavis were recently described including CT scans that revealed their interior structures. Turning to invertebrate fossils, an keen amateur paleontologist made an amazing fossil find in central Australia. Patrick Nelson found a 460 million year old arthropod, the first of its kind for the area. It's about 3 centimetres long, quite weathered, and looking a bit like a tadpole. And an arthropod entombed in a form of opal represents a new way to see creatures from the ancient past. This is the first record of an animal fossil preserved in an opal formed by weathering. The fossil is of an insect belonging to the order Hemenoptera, and either the family Tetigarsidae or the Cicardidae. It has high resolution details including individual cuticle hairs. That's it from this edition of Paleo News. For more info on these stories and more stories from the prehistoric past, visit us on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Subscribe on YouTube for future editions of Paleo News and sign up as a patron on Patreon to get your news ahead of the pack.